Welcome, welcome to Barry. I'm excited. Is your brother, your servant, Apostle Dynamic? I just have a word for you today, and I know that word will be a blessing to you. You know, one thing I love with the Word of God is the Word of God is so pregnant with possibilities, with 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 light, with with blessings, with wisdom, with knowledge. You can never go wrong when you, you begin to stick with the Word. And, uh, you know, the Word is God Himself. And I've always wondered, you know, God is a God of heaven. God is a God of the earth. God could have chosen many ways to come to be a blessing to us. He could have sent an angel, could have sent, you know, power or sort of thing. But He chose... When it came to unfolding his plan to humanity to send his son. And his son came not as an angel, not as light. He came as the word. And the Bible very clear. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And I know when you stick with the word, you always come back with a testimony. We know a lot of things we are concerned about today, they're all going to pass away. And the Bible is very clear that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the living God will remain forever. So, I want you, you know, to, to join me today when I go through some scriptures. I also want to thank some of our friends who have been writing to us from Melbourne. We thank you so much for watching. We hope that we continue to be a blessing to you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for encouragement. You know, it is those uh, positive, even negative criticism that causes us to go forward. And uh, we focus on the positivity. And we thank you so much, especially uh, Melbourne. We receive your message. We're very encouraged. God bless you. Keep watching. Share. If you see it was a blessing to you, uh, like you, some of you say, share with somebody. Let it be a blessing to them as well. God bless you. Let's open the word of prayer. And we are going to start our broadcast this morning. Father, we just want to thank you. The Bible says it is the entrance of your word that brings light and understanding to the simple. We want to come to feast at the table of the Lord. Father, give us a word in season. You say good servant, a good master is the one who gives his servant food in season. You are our master. Give us the food and the bread. Jesus, you say we should ask for a daily bread. And we believe there is a bread for us today that will open our eyes, the bread that will empower our hearts, a bread that will bring us to another level in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, Amen. I want to go really very quick in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2 from verse 41. His parent talking about Jesus, went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem to the, according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I sought you anxiously. He said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business glory to God I just want us to reflect on this piece of scripture the Bible says that 
Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem every year. Every year. In other words, this was their custom. So by this time, Jesus was 12 years old. So all these years they went to Jerusalem, they are used with it. This is what they do. This is one of the things that, that is part of their agenda. It is part of the yearly schedule. They know during this particular time we have to go up to Jerusalem to, to worship. Because in Jerusalem, that's where the temple was. They had to go offer their offering. They had to go do a lot of things. So it is tradition. They are used with it. And one thing I want us to understand, sometimes when we do things by traditions, we have no expectation. We have no longing. Because it's something you do. Something you are accustomed with. And my concern today is that as you are watching, sometimes you know, even prayer can become a tradition. Maybe re reading the word can become a tradition. Maybe fasting, communion, or whatever we do can become a tradition. And when you do things by tradition, it loses the awesomeness. It loses the reverence. It loses the, the, the longing, the expectation you can have is to expect the result. You know, if you take prayer for just a tradition, something you pray before you eat, you pray before you sleep, as a result, now you don't expect when you pray something will happen. When you take your fasting, the same. When you take your reading the word, the same. So you just do it by tradition. So you become careless. You know, you pray when you are sleeping down your bed, you just go to sleep or whatever, what's the, whatever is the case. So we kind of, when we, we begin to focus on traditions, Tradition have way of robbing us from what God has for us. So we lose the awesomeness. We, we lose the fact that all oh, just looking at the beauty of it. We lose looking at the focusing on the greatness of it. We, we lose the focusing, the, the, the splendor of what you are beholding. You, you lose the, the splendor, the depth, the the greatness, the, the beauty of prayer, the greatness of the word of God. You know, even when when sometimes someone might send you, you know, a video or a text or whatever concerning the word, you just brush it off because it's a tradition, something we just do. And we lose the fact that the very word that I'm sending to you, the very word that you're reading is the very substance that created the whole earth. That created you, that created all the things that we see, some of them we can't see. So it's all embedded in the world. So here now, Jesus' parent went to Jerusalem as a tradition. And just stopping here, I want us now to begin to look at the things of God by traditions. Especially some of us who've been in church for a while. You know, you just know you go to church, you worship, that's what you do. You lift your hand, give your friend, there you go. And it becomes Tradition become a cycle of your daily routine, a cycle of daily experiences. This is the thing you do, and that's how you do it. So you lose the power of it. You use the impact. You use the all. You you lose, as I said, the expectation. So you go to church not expecting because you have done it for the past twenty years. And I want to invite us to not to to be really be lost into that, not to really be caught up into them and. Uh, the routine of tradition but we must always remember every single day you go to the table of the lord when you are reading your bible remember jesus said god gives us a daily bread you go to the word with expectation that god has a word for me you go to the presence of god with expectation his compassion then they are not consumed you know his his mercies are new every morning so you, you go in the presence of god knowing this is the day that the lord has made there there is something new for me there's something fresh for me there is a new anointing there's a new grace there's a new power there's a level understanding i do not have yesterday there's a level understanding I know I have during this week there is an, in the level of impact I do not experience so God want to bring us from level to level as we begin to stay away from tradition you know this scripture Mark chapter 7 
verse 13 the bible says making the word of god of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things you do and when we begin to allow you know uh, traditions of men to 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 creep in into the our 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 walk with god to creep in into our faith to creep in into our um you know our approach to to our our relationship with jesus what happened now we lose the beauty we lose the the miracles we we lose the blessing to robs us to to the glory of god the, the things god would love to to release in our midst as we come together or as we we come to the word or we come to his presence so let us know that we have to be very careful that we do not approach the presence of god in a traditional way we do not use the experiences of the past the way we've done it before to to carry the same mind to carry the same mindset into the presence of god the bible says again first peter chapter 1 verse 18 knowing that you were redeemed with co you were no redeemed sorry first peter 1 18 knowing that you were no redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your endless conduct received by tradition from your fathers so even jesus coming and the blood of jesus has made provision of deliverance through tradition from traditions so there are things that god knows that they were handed down to us and we have acquired this this thing and we have integrated this thing is part of our daily experiences and the blood of jesus has made provision for us to be delivered from these particular traditions because god knows from our own by ourselves we can't god knows that there are things you are taught by church there are things you are taught by parents there are things you are taught by you are bringing that they are so anchored in you they are so inked in you they, are, they have taken so much place in you they have become a fortress some of them will become a sort of idolatry and you are not able to let them go sometimes people will, will walk away from churches walk away from businesses from relationship based on their upbringing based on experience because because they, 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 they consider whatever believe they believe is important part of their lives being a tradition be, being this particular thing have been experienced as part of family tradition so they are not prepared to compromise on certain values because they say this is what my father told me my mom told me and i'm not prepared to let go and the result now it robs up from a lot of things and god said the blood of jesus made available for us to be delivered from tradition so going back to our scripture again we see mary the bible says they went down to jerusalem by tradition now as they were walking with jesus you know they're in the crowd and i want us to know this all of us we are walking with jesus and there are little things that happen as we walk with jesus the bible says you know uh, as they walk with jesus verse chapter 2 jesus was 12 years old and they finished the, the journey so they were in the family they were among the acquaintances they're among relatives so jesus kind of lingered and they were in a, in a, a one day journey and jesus was kind of lost in the crowd see that's what tradition does you know you become careless you know we always come with jesus and we go back he's always there you know that's how we pray that's how we've done it but what i'm telling you because i have there is a sense in my spirit that god wants to do something new god wants to bring us to a new level of glory and i know that for new wine we, we need a new vessel so this mindset that we have that we have acquired in the past can prevent us from experiencing what god has for us so these people now they just know life as usual jesus must be somewhere with the pair the uncles or the cousin is hanging around so jesus lingered as a result now they lost jesus in the journey you know i don't know you can be so busy with life you just can lose we can lose jesus through just the 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 daily mundanes of life we can lose jesus through the you know the 
Just the challenge of life, just going to work every day and the demand of our society and the demands of life and the demand of providing and providing there and not experiencing anything, you know. Sometimes we can, we can just lose Jesus in the process. So that's what happened to Mary and Joseph. They, they just lost Jesus. And they, sometimes, they, you know, the worst part of it and what really shocking to me, when you lose him, you don't even know that he's no longer there. You know? When you're losing, you, you just think that life is usual and you continue with your, with our Christian, Christian cliche, praise the Lord, God is good all the time. But for some reason, you know that you don't have that anymore. That thing you used to have before, that, that passion for the presence of God, that passion for prayer, that passion, that passion just to, to wait in the, his presence you know you don't have that anymore but you still have the cliche you still have the crowd you still go to church and you you give your offering and you give your you know time and your gift and talent and you, you serve but you know you have lost it you have lost him that's what happened but thank god they came to a place after a day they they noticed that Jesus is not there. Now look at this. Verse 44 says, By supporting him to have been in the company, they went in a day journey. This day, we have to be very, very careful as we walk with God. No, not to presume. Not to, to Suppose they just suppose oh, everything is fine, it must be somewhere there. We can't live in presumption, we are called to live by faith. And one thing with faith faith does not live in presumption, faith lives in knowledge. We have to know the Bible says, Know that the Lord is God. So we have to know that Jesus is present. We need to know what the word says. We need to know what God has spoken concerning my circumstances. What God has spoken concerning my family. What God has spoken concerning my finances. What God has spoken concerning my family. What? You can't live in presumption and experience the power of God. You can't live in presumption and experience the manifestation of divine glory. You can't live in presumption and suppose that God will just show up. This is not a bracadab this is no this is no some magic kind of thing this is the word of god is based on principle precept upon precept line upon line so we have to know what the word has spoken based on our circumstances so in this particular scripture we see they supposed him to be you can't just, I just suppose God going to bless me. I just suppose God going to visit me. I suppose God going to feel my family. I suppose God going to, you know. You know, you're not supposed to live in a supposition or presumption. You have to know for sure that God loves me. You have to know for sure. God will never leave me for sin. You have to know for sure. You must have the surety, the confidence in what God has spoken. So here they suppose, after they journey, they the suppose. And some of us have been 10 years. You've been supposing, pre presuming that God will, 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 will always do it for me. You've been presuming 15 years have passed, 20 years have passed. 30. You've been presuming. I, I believe God is calling us no longer to live a presumption. That's why we are being disappointed. That's why we are being hurt because you are presuming. No, God is calling you to go past presumption. You have to live by faith. You have to know the way. You have to understand the scripture. You must understand the promises. You must understand what God has spoken about your life they presume him to be there and then they realize oh my god he's not here and I believe it is grace when you begin to come to the place of understanding your own limitation when you begin to realize you know what what about? You see, all those questions sometimes we have in our mind, we rebuke is the devil. Sometimes these quest questions are prompted by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit to bring in the place of clarity, to bring the place of direction, to bring the place where God wants to show something. And some of us been questioning everything. You know, I, I, I have to be honest with you. I the past few months or so years, I would say, I've been questioning everything I've known, I've known about the Bible, about the church. I was saying to myself, what about what I've been taught, if I didn't really locate it in the Bible? What about if it was just my leader's experience 
with God, but it has nothing to do with the reality of the scripture. What about, you know, we have to ask questions. So sometimes those questions that you have overwhelming you, flooding your heart, is not necessarily the devil. You know what they came and they jumped and said, wait a minute, is he here? If you start feeling, you know, what about if I'm wrong? <laughs> You know, it's nothing wrong with that. It, God prompting you. What about you? Must have been doing it for the past twenty years. I have to ask myself. What about if what they've been doing for the past fifteen years? What about if I was wrong? It's okay because the Bible says there is a hope for the living. I'm still alive. God is the God of restoration. So if I had it wrong for the past fifteen years, the past twenty years, the past thirty years, God can always give me another opportunity to do well. Is you are better off, you know, living in the truth of the th the next three years, five years of your life, than being stuck in something you have known in the past ten years. Doesn't even work because somebody told you this, told you that. It's not even the reality of the scripture. So I want you to know that God is a God of truth. Where He's taking us, He wants you to have truth of the word, and this truth has be connected to what He has spoken. Not your experience with the church or not your experience with any denomination or the man of God, the woman of God, what have you, but it has to be rooted in the word of the living God. So they just presume Jesus is there and it's the beginning to think, what about if he's not here? What about the way you're living your life? It was not really true. What about if what you believe you have believed all of your life? It was a lie. What about if what you're taught in university is not really the reality of what it is? What about what you've always believed? You have, is it possible you can be wrong? You know, there are these questions. Sometimes God it helps us and prompts us. We, we floods our heart and we question and, and, and stuff going through your mind. You're just overwhelmed. You, you are having a lot of rest. But you're, you're, you're kind of restless. You know? you, you're having a lot of rest, but you're not rested. You know, you're sleeping, but you're not have you're not feeling arrested. God is just flooding your heart, not tormenting you, flooding your heart to question because you want to bring you to a place of clarity. The lost Jesus. Is it possible that for the past 20, 30 years, maybe I lost Jesus somewhere, and all that we were doing was just religion? Is it possible? It can be possible. You know. I have to ask myself, is it possible that all this I've been doing, I've been doing it, I don't know how, by, you know, by tradition that I receive from my leaders, it has nothing to do with the reality of what God is trying to do? Is it, it can be possible. So we have, so they come to the place, and I think it is grace. When grace wants to locate you, it's always releases the question. Where are you, Adam? It's not God is lost. It's grace that trying to locate you. Maybe you know. Maybe, is it? Maybe you might be wrong the way you are living in your house. It might be wrong the way you are living your marriage, or you're raising your kids, or you're doing your business, your finances. You might be wrong. You know, we can't be wrong. You know, it is a hard, I know it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard to say. I might be wrong. Yeah, I might be wrong. You know, we can't be wrong. So, in this process, guess what? They just decided now. Let's go back to Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem represents the presence of God. You know, Jer Jerusalem represents where the Shekinah glory of God descended. You know, Jerusalem represents where the house of God is. Jerusalem represents the place of meeting, the place of connection. You know, I've been walking all this way, all these years. I just realized, you know what? Maybe I'm just going by myself. Maybe I left him in Jerusalem. Let me just go back. And some of us, maybe, it's not really an error per se. Some of us just going back to your first love. You know, as you begin, we begin to grow in knowledge, grow in understanding, grow in experiences. Sometimes we tend to lose that first love. And you're just calling, you know what? Go back to Jerusalem. And we have to have the humility enough to say, no, I'm going back. So he went back to Jerusalem. They went back to Jerusalem. And the Bible says, they saw, even when they went back to Jerusalem, it, 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 it's not like they just arrived in Jerusalem and they find him. No. It took them a while to find him. You see? And I don't know some of us, you know, you, you've been in church for the past 30 years and 40 years. It is hard to accept that you might have been wrong. 
and when you you be wrong and you come to the place you know i really want to find out the reality of prayer the reality of this thing i've been doing i want them to work for me it might take you a while to really come to that place and it takes humility you have to go back and, and leave your you know they have to leave their relatives behind their acquaintances behind sometimes when you're in a journey you're in a journey by yourself and you might have to leave some people behind the people your church people you know your folks you know probably your people are going to mention because god has set you on a particular course god has set you on a journey and expecting to get your full attention so when they are there they look for jesus look for him remember they walk for one day and when they came back and look what the bible said i love what the bible said the bible said verse 46 now it, it was that after three days they found him in the temple after three days they walked for a day but they found him after three days think about that three days is three times the journey that they took so sometimes it takes you longer to find him after you have lost him so imagine let, let, let's say that one 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 day journey to you it might be maybe 10 years or five years being on this journey and certain you came to realize no i might have been wrong but it take you another maybe 15 years just to, to come to a place you know what ah oh, this one i've been longing for this one i've been experiencing so what i want you to know especially in this season let not be caught up with just things as usual but let's be caught up in the reality of who jesus is and when you have lost him it is easy to lose him friends but it's not always easy to find him it took them one day to get lost but it took them three days to find him so in this particular time where god is wanting us to stay away from tradition he wants us to get a hold of good tradition not every tradition is bad look what the bible says second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 15 therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught whether by word or our epistles you see there are good traditions like prayer is a good tradition fasting is a good tradition giving is a good tradition worship is a good tradition walking in love is a good tradition you know walking in humility and kindness and they see god has spoken to us these are good traditions and apostle paul said to us that we have to stand fast we should not let go we should not give all these good traditions another way we build our lives on the ground of good tradition what we let go of the worst tradition we receive from our fathers we receive from our evil experiences we receive from the account that we had with the men and the women who hurt us and bruised us and left us the uh, you know ostracized or stranded or whatever happened to us and god is telling us let go of this tradition and cleave to the good ones get a hold to the good ones and guess guess what they find it i tell you what you can really find it if you really want you can find him today and you can begin building a good tradition today i don't know about you but i feel like you know what i question everything today i'm sorry i had wonderful leaders i've been places i met with people i met apostle prophet great speaker all around the places you know i've traveled here and there trying to go to find out who can be a blessing to me but i've come to the place in my life i don't know maybe it's aging maybe because i can see some gray hair on my beard i don't know but but maybe it's age I just come to the place i start asking questions i say you know if i have my bible and god is real i can just talk to him let him talk to me this is what I'm trying to tell you today. You can find him. It took them a while. Remember, three days. That three times the journey it took them to lose him. It might take you a while. Maybe the whole year you might be praying and fasting and you know seeking the Lord and just trusting Him. And you know, you know sometimes we are so fast. You've been in the, we've been in a mess for a long time. What God fix it today? Bless me today. But we make financial you know decisions wrong decision took us for 15 years 20 years 30 years with wrong decisions but we want god fix it today sometimes it might take a while as we get knowledge as we get wisdom we get understanding and we begin to build with 
go traditions and we find him again and guess what he starts speaking to them again they lost him for three three days now he starts speaking to them he said to them you know didn't you know i have to be about my father's business i know i work you should have known where to find me you see it doesn't matter how long you can still find him I can see the finding. It does not matter uh, me. It does not matter how long I, I'm feeling like, oh God, where is your presence? Where is God? I can still find Him. You can still find Him. So I want to pray for you this morning that God will give you the grace to find Him again. I give you the grace to start to build on good tradition, the tradition of the word, tradition of faith. All this old tradition, we are not going to remove the mark, the landmark that the forefathers left us, the landmark of faith of Abraham, the landmark of righteousness by law, by Noah. Then all these old landmarks, we don't want to let them go. Today, I want to pray for you. I want to lift you in the presence of God. To, we are together in the journey. We want to walk in the truth. We want to find Him again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you're there, you're struggling. You say, no, a dynamic. I just don't know where I'm at at the moment. I know exactly what you're feeling. I've been there. Probably I might say I'm up. Now and then I'm there. You know, you don't know what you're doing. And you just fall in, your, in, in His presence on your knees. Sometimes you don't feel His presence. You just, God, what's happening? But we're all there. You know, you, do, you are not alone. We are together in this thing. So I want to pray with you. I want to stand with you. I want to tell you that God is with you. God, you know, even though... Jesus, they lost Jesus, but Jesus, no kind of, when he found them, you know, he didn't, look at them, he didn't judge them, look at him, he didn't judge, he didn't, he didn't go like, oh, you guys, I mean, you guys can be so careless, you don't, you know, I'm 12, you know, you pursue, no, he said to my, you, you know that I have to be my father's business, I want you to know, he's waiting for you in Jerusalem, he's waiting for you in a secret place, he's waiting for you in the place of relationship, I want to pray for you. You know, would you mind just closing your eyes? I want to pray for you, leading a word of prayer. Father, thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. Father, I pray. This word you, you put in my heart today, we can still find you. The Bible says, let's seek the Lord when he may be found. You say in your word, I think James 4, 8, we should draw near to you, draw near unto us. Father, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. Those who are going through challenges, they're going through difficult, difficulties and and you know, they, they, they kind of lost their journey. Father, I pray your grace to locate them. Just like you located me and you located many around the world. Father, bless them today. And those who don't know you, Father, give them the grace. Give them the grace to come to a place of knowledge. I bless your people today. Father, we honor you. Thank you. You are such a good God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. And we meet again next telecast. Love you. Shalom.